I got a good message for you tonight. It's uh, let's go to uh, the Gospel of John and start in chapter eight. I thought instead of preaching out of uh, the writings of Paul tonight, I would take a break from that and we'll spend some time with the Lord directly. How's that sound? Chapter 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Period. <laughs> what do you think he was doing up there? Playing video games? Talking on his cell phone? <laughs> Watching TV? Just wasting time? Well, if you read between the lines here, or the first line, you'd probably guess that he was spent a lot of time with God the Father in prayer and probably getting his instructions for when he'd come down out of the mountain. So let's see what happens here. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and preached at them? No. He just taught them. He didn't get up and, and uh, sweat out two or three shirts and holler and scream at the people and then tell them he needed a big, huge offering and all this other stuff. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was for the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees. That was their job. He wasn't there to do their job. He was there to do the will of the Father. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, or testing him, which they did a lot, that they might have, I could put in the word, something to accuse him with. Okay? But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. <laughs> I love this. I just love how he mocked these religious guys because they had a huge religious spirit. Okay, and for those of you who don't know what a religious spirit is, it's one of the devil's substitutes for the true spirit of God. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where a religious spirit is, there's bondage and condemnation, and you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't go swimming, and you can't drink coffee, and you can't do this or that. You can't heal on the Sabbath day. You can't go through uh, the field and pluck an ear of corn and eat it on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't preach the word on the Sabbath day. <laughs> Some religious spirits are that way. So this is what Jesus here was up against. And he just mocks them, as though he heard them not. Because guess what? Jesus was the author of the law that Moses had. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They drank of that same spiritual rock, and that rock that followed them back in the Old Testament during Moses' day was Christ. Mm-hmm. All right. So when they continued asking him, in other words, they, they pressed on him, made a big deal out of it, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Hmm. Interesting. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. You notice how he overcame this religious spirit very quickly with just a few words. He knew their mind and he knew he knew of their scandal. He was already ten steps ahead of them. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. You know, I would imagine that each one of these guys here, these Pharisees, was eager to stone this woman. And the reason being is they'd all had her. And if the scandal got around town, she opened her mouth a little bit, these Pharisees would have had a hard time cleaning up their reputations. That's why Jesus told them what he told them. 
he that is without sin among you cast a stone at her first. Go ahead. See if you can get past your own consciences, you guys. And it's kind of the same way with the religious world today. They can't teach something that they don't have. All they can do is preach at you. See, that's the difference between the, the true spirit of God and a false one. Yeah, sure, there are a lot of preachers out there. And they can preach whatever they want. But are they preaching righteousness? Or are they teaching people how to get to God? How to have that personal relationship? That's the question you need to ask when, you hear, when hearing these guys. Okay? When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman, and he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin a little bit every day. No, no. That's not what it says here in the word. Go and sin no more. Hmm. Well, if, if you know your word, you know that you can go and sin no more. Jesus obvious, obviously told this woman that it was possible. And if it weren't possible, why would Jesus have said this to her? Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In other words, you're not going to walk in sin anymore. You're going to have the light of life. And we know that if we do make a mistake or outright sin... We have an advocate with the Father, that same Jesus Christ, who will not condemn us for it. All we have to do is repent of it and move on. And not beat ourselves up over what had just happened. As long as we don't do it again. That's how we sin no more. Okay? We keep that attitude in our mind, not to sin. But if we happen to stumble or get in a moment of weakness or whatever, sometimes those things happen. And we're overtaken in a fault. We do have that advocate with the Father. That's Jesus Christ. All right? That's the light of life. That's not walking around in darkness. That's not wallowing around in your sin. And claiming it for yourself. Oh, I'm such a sinner. Why do religious people do that? Because they have a religious spirit and not the light of life. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They have something that acts like the Holy Spirit or imitates it, which is a, a religious spirit. That's the difference. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Hmm. They called Jesus a liar. Because he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees weren't offering those folks back there the light of life, the, the resurrection power, or the Holy Ghost. None of that stuff. They weren't offering those people a thing. The only thing that they were offering the people was to stay under their thumb, under their religion, and under their strict law that they so dearly loved, that law of Moses, and the, being the children of Abraham, which we'll find out later. They loved that stuff. They loved their old traditions and their old patriarchs. All right. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Their natural mind couldn't know the things of the Spirit because it wasn't for them to know. They thought they knew it all. Spiritually, they thought they had become uh, rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing, spiritually. They were dead wrong. They needed Christ just as much as they needed anything, just as much as anyone else needed him. You judge after the flesh, I judge no man. See, there's, there's the whole point right there. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Bet you they loved hearing that. <laughs> it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. How did, how did that happen? Well, it was prophesied way back in the old prophets that uh, 
John the Baptist would come and lead the way for Jesus Christ to come and signal and herald his coming. Let everybody know what was on the plate for, for the coming days. Then they said unto him, Where is thy father? These guys were, sure had a lot of questions for being doctors of the law, weren't they? Real, real spiritual guys. And yet they sure had a lot of dumb questions to ask. <laughs> Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, you should have known my father also. See, the father was right there in front of their faces, and they couldn't see it. Their eyes were blinded to it, and their hearts were hardened. <laughs> Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. The most so-called spiritual guys in the, in the whole area, and they couldn't see the Lord right there, in front of, right there in front of their faces. They knew the Word of God. They knew it backwards and forwards. But they didn't know God. They only knew a bunch of words. And there's your difference. They had a religious spirit. They didn't have the spirit. And they, they had no faith either. Okay. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. They wanted to. <laughs> Don't think that there wasn't any uh, evil thoughts going around about him. <laughs> they were ready to take him right there. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Hmm. He knew ahead of time these uh, scribes and Pharisees weren't going to get it. They were never going to understand. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. <laughs> They always had scandal on their minds. They, they, they wondered if he would commit suicide, which is not of God. They attributed all kinds of thing, ungodly things to, to the Lord here. And he said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. And that's interesting, too. In Psalm 110, it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And Jesus tells him here, You are from beneath. <laughs> You're under my feet. You're my footstool. Already, the Lord had proclaimed that scripture from way back from David. It's kind of interesting. Psalm 110 is a very important scripture. It ties everything together. The Lord, God the Father, said unto my Lord, Jesus Christ, sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And that's what Jesus was doing up here at the Mount of Olives. He was sitting at the Father's right hand, in the Spirit. Let's go to Psalm 149 for a minute. I want to show you what Jesus was doing. Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of, of saints. We did that before the meeting, we sung songs. Let Israel, or the church, rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp, and the guitar, and the electric guitar, and the pianos, and the basses, and the drums, and all that good stuff. I have the authority to add somewhat to this okay for the lord taketh pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with mediocrity no nope. that's what a religious spirit does it stays in mediocrity all the time it d digs its heels in and it doesn't go any further and overcome he will beautify the meek with salvation ah not religion it doesn't say he will beautify the meek with religion does it <laughs> Now, here's, here's the one I wanted to get to. Let the saints be joyful in glory, which is a place above all heavens. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. That's what Jesus was doing at the Mount of Olives. We can be joyful in glory and sing aloud upon our beds, at, be two places at the same time, by the Spirit. We can do it. 
This proves it right here. When you sing aloud upon your beds or you're, you're on your prayer bones before God or in your prayer closet, whatever you want to call it, or just being alone with the Lord, getting your time in between you and Him, you can be on your bed wherever you are and also be joyful in glory with Him at the same time. Your spirit always beholds the face of God in glory. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. We've each got one in our hands today. It's your Bible. It's got one side on one side and another page on the other side. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. You have to have somebody to rule and reign over when you enter the next life and in this life also. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Mm -hmm. We stop the actions of the devils with our prayers. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, that's all of you, praise ye the Lord. Okay, That's what Jesus was doing over there at the Mount of Olives. He was in two places at once during that time, getting what he needed. And we have the ability to do the same thing. All right, where was I over here in John again? I think I was over in chapter 8, verse uh, around 25 or so. Hmm. Okay, the Jews said, Will he kill himself because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. He was in it, but he wasn't of it. And we have that same spirit of Christ within us today. Anything that Jesus claims here, we can go ahead and claim for ourselves because we have that spirit of him within us. We are his ambassadors and we are his representatives just as if he were here in this world in the flesh. Only there's many, many more of us. Isn't that exciting? Just imagine the things that we can get done being so many of us here. Well, Jesus was only just one man. He had to get it all done back then and there all on his own. His disciples were still learning. They had to see it all. He taught them everything. Okay? I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. There wasn't any way around that. He gave them that little if there. But he didn't give them much space. He knew they weren't going to make it. These, this was a particularly nasty bunch right here. Then they said, then said they unto him, Who art thou? You know, if you'd read from John 1 to John 8, he made it pretty well clear by this time who he was and what he was doing and what his ministry was. You notice they, they keep asking these foolish questions here, trying to gender strife. And Jesus saith unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. See, he had hit it, he had drilled it into him with a drill and hit him over the head with it with a hammer. And they still couldn't get it. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Mm -hmm. Not from some seminary somewhere, or not from some other doctor of the law, some other scribe or pharisaical guy. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. They couldn't understand or grasp a whole heck of a lot, could they? For being doctors of the law, they looked pretty dumb. Then said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, he, Jesus didn't always do the things that please these uh, scribes and the, Phar and the Pharisees here. <laughs> oh no, just the other way around. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Hmm. I like that. The job got done, still got done, even through all this opposition. Jesus cut through all of this BS, and, and still many believed on him. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, 
If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whoa! What a one-two punch to the Pharisees here. <laughs> These people needed to be freed up, and they needed the truth. They needed to get out from under the thumb and the iron fist of these scribes and Pharisees. They'd been uh, under these guys way too long. I just love this. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Wait a minute. Weren't they in bondage under the uh, Egyptians for the longest time? Hmm. What was, uh, had they forgotten? Wait a minute. Their own word told them what they had done. They all knew, were supposed to know the story of their own exodus and all that stuff, right? That's interesting. We be Abraham's seed. Well, our DNA says that we're superior. Oh, really? <laughs> Abraham was your biological father. He wasn't your spiritual father. There's a difference between the flesh and the spirit. This is the whole point that Jesus here is trying to make. <laughs> your DNA says this or that. Mm -hmm. We be Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any. What do you mean never? They were under the Egyptians. How sayest thou, thou shalt, ye shall be made free? Jesus was trying to tell these people they'd be free from these scribes and Pharisees here. That's how they'd be free. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Yeah, free from all that sin. Free from all that bondage. Mm -hmm. We were never in bondage to any man. Well, they were the servants of sin, surely, un under the law. Because the law could make no man perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope, Jesus Christ, did. Period. And the scripture cannot be broken. Okay. You shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed. I know quite well. But you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Mm -hmm. It was, the, it was uh, that rocky ground. Nothing could get in there. Nothing could grow there. Their hearts were hardened. They had, these guys had hearts of stone. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Who was their father? They were of the devil. A religious devil. A religious spirit. It's interesting how all of this comes together, isn't it? They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yes, that's what your DNA says. That's great. Good for you. It doesn't get you an inch off the ground. If they'd have had the faith of Abraham, they would have received Jesus Christ with open arms. Instead, all of this, uh, all of this backlash and backtalk here. <laughs> These guys weren't even smart enough to realize who they were mouthing off. <laughs> the very Lord himself. The, the Messiah that they were waiting for. <laughs> Not the brightest bunch over here. Okay? Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Mm -hmm. You'd have faith and you'd just you'd be obedient to God. That was another one of Abraham's attributes. He obeyed God. A lot of the other Israelites and the, the Jews didn't. They couldn't. They couldn't do it. They didn't have the faith to do it. And they, they stayed in their sins. They liked it being in that comfortable little rut that they were in. Okay? But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham couldn't get the whole job done. He couldn't fulfill the gospel. He only knew about it afar off and had to have enough faith to believe 
that it was going to come to pass. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said, then said they unto him, to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Hmm. Why would they say something like this to, to the Lord? Why would they say something like, we be not born of fornication? Um, well, if you read between the lines here, they were trying to do away with the virgin birth idea. They were trying to say that the Lord's mother was a whore and that he was born of fornication, being a bastard child. So, by implication, they're really insulting him to his face right here. You catch that? Mm-hmm. See how this works? They were kind of subtle about it, yet not really. We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. They're trying to put, him, put themselves in Jesus' place here. Jesus was the only one who had God as, as his biological father and spiritual. <laughs> Jesus was the only one that could make that claim there. Isn't that strange how they, they did a total role re reversal here? Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. That's the only way it would work. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? E even because ye cannot hear my word. Mm -hmm. It was foolishness to him. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. <laughs> I went to a Christian school one time, and uh, this was in seventh grade, and one of my teachers said that, that, you know, next week, such and such a time, we were going to do such and such a thing. I, it was so long ago, I really don't remember what it was. And then when the time came around, um, a couple of the other students in the class said, well, how come we were supposed to do this today. How come we're, we're doing something different? And the, the teacher goes, well, I lied. And he sounded real, you know, real proud of that. And I stood up and I quote this and I said, Satan is the father of all lies. Boy, you could have heard a pin drop. This was in Bible class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this Bible teacher was just like these Pharisees here. I lied. But I got my word out too. And pins were dropping after that, I'll tell you that. All right. <clears throat> and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. It was too simple for him to understand. It wasn't complicated enough. It wasn't convoluted enough so that their doctoral minds had something to work on. It must have frustrated the heck out of them. Their, their doctorate minds had nothing complex to work on and work out. <laughs> Jesus wasn't giving them trigonometry problems to work on or whatever. This is good. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? That's a pretty good question. He that is of God heareth God's words. Mm -hmm. My sheep know my voice. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. It was just that simple. It's too simple for them to understand. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well, or, or isn't it right that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? <laughs> it's like I said, these guys are a particularly nasty bunch here. Hmm, man. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Boy, did they ever. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. They couldn't, they couldn't get their hands around that one either. Jesus wasn't talking about their natural bodies. He was talking about that spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Dying in their sins. 
Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Of whom makest thou thyself? They accused him of pulling himself up by his own bootstraps and being a big shot here. It couldn't have been further from the truth. Jesus never made himself of any reputation or put himself out there like he was some great one. He never did. He didn't have to. He had all the power and authority he needed just to get his work done, his father's work done. That's all he was there to do. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. See? It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. <laughs> But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Here's another brain twister for these scribes and Pharisees here. <laughs> this is great. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? They were still thinking with their fleshly mind. They couldn't grasp the fact that Jesus had always been. This whole Bible is Jesus Christ. I'm happy to report. The Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament, Christ revealed. All right? That rock that followed them was Christ. Back in the Old Testament. What it sure was. Let us make man in our own image. Who was God talking to there? Well, it must have been Jesus Christ. Hadn't been brought down in the flesh yet. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> well, it twisted their heads so much, then they took up stones, then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. He just kind of vanished into the ether. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, really not knowing what they were talking about, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Hmm. His disciples still had a little bit of that phar pharisaical religious spirit on them. Oh, if this guy's in dire straits, he must have sinned. He must have done something to deserve it. Sounds like your Catholic church. If something happened to you, it was your fault. Guilt. Where's the guilt? These disciples here were looking at Jesus to find some guilt. Sorry, they were looking in the wrong place because there wasn't any here. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Ah, so there was a, a deeper purpose to all of this. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hmm. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. <laughs> Ooh, he spit in that guy's eyes. That's what a religious spirit would say. He spit right in that man's eyes. Ooh. Just something to get all worked up over. And he made it dirty. It's dirty and nasty looking. <sighs> hey, when God formed Adam out of the earth, that probably wasn't too... Uh, it probably looked pretty grisly during the process, don't you think? Ever thought about that? That kind of process? What that must have looked like? Taking all those elements and all that stuff and all the, the vital humors that it takes to fill the body with and putting them in there the first time? Hmm. Interesting, huh? Okay, <laughs> he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. All right, and, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. The pool of Siloam was the scribes and Pharisees drinking water. <laughs> yeah, go dirty up these guys drinking water. I just That's what I want you to do. 
he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. All right, so here was a man who had some faith. He wasn't blinded, if you pardon the pun, by the sight of his eyes or by the, the thoughts of the, the fleshly mind here. He had a little bit of faith. And he also had works because Jesus told him to go do something. Okay, he anointed the, the blind man's eyes with the clay, and then he said, well, I want you to do something, and then you'll get your healing. Gave him something to do. So, according to his faith, if he hadn't had the faith to go do what the Lord asked him to do, then he wouldn't have gotten the healing. He'd have just been walking around with a dirty face. Which is, unfortunately, the way most religious people end up walking around in their daily lives. <laughs> their faces are kind of dirty. They don't have the faith to wash that off in their baptism and receive the Holy Spirit and to get their eyesight, their spiritual eyesight healed so that they can really hear with their spiritual ears and see with their spiritual eyes and really get going again. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Hmm. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Okay, so there was a little bit of a question on, <laughs> on uh, how this came about here. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. And he said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed. And I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. Okay, this next paragraph here. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. Oh, great. Isn't that something? How whenever the, the work of the Lord is getting done, that religious spirit just has to go and stick their nose in it, muck around in it, try to find fault with it. And this is exactly what they did. Let's, let's keep on going here. Oh, look out. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Oh, Jesus did work on the Sabbath day. Jesus did work on the Sabbath day. That was a no-no. You did no work on the Sabbath day. Otherwise, you were a bad person. Uh-oh. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and do see. It was too simple for them to understand, wasn't it? Once again, just a little bit too simple. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. There's your religious spirit talking again. Hmm. Here's the true work of God getting done. A man, finally, free of all of this religious stuff, seeing with his spiritual eyes and his natural eyes, for the, probably for the first time in his life. And here's this religious guy. This man is not of God, speaking of Jesus Christ, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can such a man that is a sinner do such miracles? See, there was that religious spirit and its condemnation of sin again. Saying that Jesus Christ was a sinner, and wondering how he could do miracles at the same time. We believe that we're all sinners. Where's the victory in that? I asked a couple of guys that one time, well, we believe we're all sinners. I said, I feel sorry for you, buddy. So I believe that I'm perfect. I was born with the Holy Ghost. Oh, that, neither of those things would be possible. And yet, I'm a witness that, that both of those things are possible. You guys need to take a long break and, and get as far away from me as you can. I told these guys this. You need to just stay the hell away from me. Keep your hell away from me. All right? Hmm. A man that is a sinner do such miracles. Boy, you talk about presumptuous? And there was a division among them. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They tore each other to pieces over these, these questions, and these foolish strifes of words. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him 
that he hath opened thine eyes. He said, he's a prophet. Okay. But the Jews did not believe concerning him. They had a hard time believing anything that was too simple to believe in, didn't they? Boy, I sure hate to, to worship a God that made everything way too complex for me to understand. I'd spend my whole life trying to get it all figured out. And here we've got somebody that's just too simple to understand. It's really beyond me. All right, he's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. <laughs> okay, well, you know, certainly we can't give Jesus credit for this miracle, so we've got to say that this guy had never been blind before. <laughs> and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? Boy, they got around and bothered, started bugging everybody about this whole thing. They couldn't just leave this guy alone. They had to get in there and dig around and, and, and waste everyone's time. <laughs> All right. His parents answered them and, and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. Well, they'd already put him through the ringer. They probably had him under a swinging bare light bulb, an interrogation room or some kind of thing like that, you know. <laughs> These Pharisees were just brutal and Nazi-like enough to go ahead and do that kind of thing. I'm surprised it didn't mention that, mention that they tortured the guy to try to get information out of him, just short of that. I suppose if they had sodium pentothal back then, they would have filled him full of it and, and given him truth serum or something. Not like they needed to. They are getting the truth anyway. All right. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Yeah, the more you, you uh, got into it with these guys, the more trouble you could get into. These parents were afraid. They were living under fear. Fear of these scribes and Pharisees. And of course, we know that fear is not of God. Living under fear of what? Fear of that big, huge religious spirit that they had. <laughs> I'm really fired up against this religious spirit today. But this reveals what the religious spirit does, how it acts, and what it can put you through, and what it does to people. All right? They feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue or excommunicated. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you want to learn the truth, folks, get ready to be uh, shoved out of your religious churches. Don't worry. <laughs> Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then, called, then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man, speaking of Jesus Christ here, is a sinner. What a bunch of spiritual dogs trying to destroy this man's faith, talk him out of his healing, and put him back under their bondage. Then, <laughs> okay, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that, whereas I was blind, now I see. Mm -hmm. I see what the truth is, and I see your religious spirit for what it is, too. Mm-hmm. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? Well, they just couldn't leave him alone. These guys weren't pastors. They were pesterers. <laughs> he answered them, said, I've told you already. And ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? <laughs> yeah, he was asked, basically asking them, Hey, do you need your, your healing you guys, you need your ears cleaned out? Maybe I should go call this Jesus fellow and have him come and, and uh, pull the crud out of your ears and out of your heads and out of your minds and out of your hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will you also be his disciples? I bet those guys hated hearing that, those Pharisees. <laughs> then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. Oh, so it went from Abraham now to Moses. 
they always had a new little thing, a new little excuse that they could jump into, didn't they? <laughs> we know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. They, they sure did a lot of admitting how much they didn't know. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. yeah, go up to your religious pastor one of these days and ask him who Melchizedek was. I'll lay you two to one that he'll say, Ah, oh, who cares? Try it. Nobody cares about that. Oh, really? It's pretty important. <laughs> Since we're uh, in a, a day in the life of Melchizedek right here, right now. Mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the captain of the Lord's host. Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace. Mm -hmm. It's important to know these things. If your pastor doesn't care, he doesn't care much about the Lord, does he? All right, I digress. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Yeah, we don't care. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Well, this uh, former blind man here has also got some spiritual cojones going, because he's really given it to these scribes and Pharisees here. He, he's, he's lacing into them pretty good. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Ooh. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Wow. This uh, former blind man here has got some good preach in him. <laughs> he's, he's full of preach. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. They excommunicated him from the church. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens when you stand up for the true gospel. <laughs> now, this is great this, in this next paragraph here. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, so Jesus went and looked out after this guy, went and found him and said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Well, he answered his own question there, Lord. He's the Lord. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, pardon the pun, <laughs> and it is he that talketh with thee. Isn't that fantastic? And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which, which see might be made blind. And of course, he was talking about these Pharisees here. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? <laughs> here's, a, here's a part of the uh, story where you could go, Duh! Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, they were spiritually blind, and yet they were claiming to have it all. Mm -hmm. They were claiming that they were the, the leaders who were going to lead the blind, but they didn't have it. You, how can you give something to somebody that you don't have? Those Pharisees and those scribes couldn't do it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. That's, that's those Pharisees, right, to a T. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go in by the, by the shepherd, by the sheep door. They couldn't go in through Jesus Christ. He's the only way to do it. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter open, openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. You know, it's interesting that uh, back during those days, 
uh, there were different shepherds and they would uh, graze their flocks in different areas. And sometimes they would have to put two flocks into one pen. And it is true that the sheep would know their shepherd's voice because the, all the sheep, say from two or three different folds, would go into one pen and they'd all mix together. But when that shepherd would open the door and call his flock out, only his flock would come because that flock knew that shepherd's voice. It's just, just the same today. It didn't matter if they mixed together or not. The wheat grows up with the tares. But the true ones go in and out the door with the true shepherd. Mm -hmm. And some of them are false shepherds and some of them are true shepherds. It's, it's up, really up to you to decide who you're going to hear. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Mm -hmm. Those scribes and Pharisees were thieves and robbers. And the folks were getting sick and tired of being under these scribes and Pharisees. It was time for a change. <laughs> They'd been waiting for this Messiah a long time. And some of the ones that truly were waiting for the Messiah were glad. About 12 or 13 of them. <laughs> I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Not by some other religion either. Not by Eastern religion or anything else. Or any other uh, so-called prophet or God or whatever. Jesus says, I'm it. I'm the door. He's the only name named under heaven and earth by which a man must be saved. That's it. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what a religious spirit does. It's a thief. It steals away the true spirit of the Lord if it can. And will, will steal your virtue, steal your faith, kill your soul, and destroy you if it can. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Not with anything taken away or disallowed, any of that stuff. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And of course he did. But he that is an hireling, someone who makes a big salary from uh, preaching his canned sermons around the United States or around the world, wherever, wherever he goes, he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, Seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Hmm. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. There are some out there that don't care about the people in their, going to their churches. They don't care enough to correct them. They don't care enough to keep their churches clean. They don't care enough to teach the true word of God like it's written. That's a hireling. And they have canned sermons. They know exactly what they're going to preach from day to day. And they, because they don't have the anointing of the Holy Ghost to show them what the people need. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. Mm -hmm. Those that are seeking the truth know what the truth is. Or should know. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Why? Because he knows he can take it again at any time. It's his to lay down and his to take again. He said, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down on my own. Okay? And other sheep I have, that's all of you, which are not of this fold, that's us. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm -hmm. If we all have the Spirit of Christ in us, we all have that one shepherd in our bodies, in, our, in the tables of our mind and heart, and in our, in our soul. 
Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power. Oh, there's something that those uh, scribes and Pharisees didn't have. That's why they were jealous of the Lord. They didn't have the power to, to heal and do all these miracles. They were afraid of losing their jobs over this Jesus Christ fellow. But you know what? If they had become true ministers of God, they would have been blessed and done just fine. All they would have had to do was just receive the good things of God. And they wouldn't have died in their sins. And they wouldn't have suffered hell when they died. They would have been just fine. They wouldn't have had anything to worry about. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. They, these, guys, these religious guys missed so much. Well, but they opposed themselves, didn't they? They sure did. Paul talks about those who oppose themselves. Do a study on that. It's quite interesting. Okay? I have power to lay it down again. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. In other words, Jesus was saying, well, I've got nothing to worry about. You can do whatever you want to me. You can't stop me. You can't fade me. You can't, you can't even kill me. Because I'll just come right back and keep doing the same things that I've been shown of my Father to do. And by God, each of us have the Spirit of Christ within us. We can do the same thing. We don't have to worry about dying or any kind of fear of anything. Because we have that resurrection power. Lord willing, if we need to be raised from the dead, we'll be raised from the dead. It will happen. If God wants me to die for something and be raised from the dead, that's fine. I'll keep doing the job that he wants me to do. If he wants to take me home, that's fine too. <laughs> there was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. Mm -hmm. Well, their opposition didn't stop. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why, hear ye him. We don't need him. Yes, you do. Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Oh, they remembered the miracles. Some of them did. Some of them here weren't completely blinded to what was going on. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? <laughs> uh, I've got news for you. <laughs> faith and doubt don't mix. Jesus was 100% pure faith. The two things that moved him the most were faith and compassion. Not this doubt that they're, put, they're trying to put on him here. How long dost thou make us to doubt? Or hold us in suspense. The, the translation out of the Greek here. If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, hadn't you been around for the first uh, ten chapters here? Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> Man, these people were, were hard-headed, weren't they? Tell us plainly. Like he hadn't done that already. Jesus answered them, I told you and you believed not. <laughs> the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. You know, uh, one time my dad healed somebody. The Lord through him healed somebody. And the lady didn't receive her healing. Uh, this happened? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He just said, well... Go ahead and have your uh, malady come back. And it did. It came right back. And she said, oh no, I believe now. I believe now. And she got her heal finally got her healing. But it was, it was something. The healing was there. All the miracles were here. Jesus' testimony and ministry was right out here in front of these people and they couldn't see it. They were blinded. Their hearts were hardened. They had selective vision, selective hearing, and selective attitudes about the whole deal. Something. But you believe me not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. I've already told you these things. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He says, well, you're a bunch of guys. You can, you can do whatever you want. You can try. You can run around like chickens with your head cut, cut off, trying to stop this work of God here. But you're not going to be able to do it. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. <laughs> I love how he, just, he would just rib them here to the point where they're ready to explode. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Oh, typical. Mm -hmm. A religious spirit is also a murdering spirit. Mm -hmm. They will come to kill you. So watch out. You want to go to a religious church? You may find yourself waking up dead one morning. Mm -hmm. You may need to die for what you believe in. You ready to do it? Just, just remember the Lord's able to raise you up again from the dead. Mm -hmm. Don't have any fear over it. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? <laughs> I love this. This is so good. You know, I've done all this good stuff for you people. For, for which of these good things are you trying to kill me for? <laughs> the Jews answered him, well, What a bunch of smart asses. For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God, or makest thyself equal to God. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. Hmm. With a small g. If any of us go walking around with a big g, then we have a little bit of an ego problem. <laughs> if you look in the mirror and see anything more than just yourself, then, well... That can be an ego problem. But I said, ye are gods. Notice he didn't tell them, David said, ye are gods. Mm -hmm. I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. I love that. Although the religious spirit does it every day. They break these scriptures up and down one side and down the other. Twist them around. Use them for their own purposes. You say of him, whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. It's as simple as that. Look, if my testimony doesn't ring true, you don't need to believe me. But if I do, if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Check out Psalm 82 when you get some free time. This is what he's referring to here. All right. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized and there he abode. It just wasn't time yet. Jesus had some uh, a few uh, new things to do here. So that the glory of God could really be recorded and handed down to us here through these scriptures. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. But all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Well, good. Well, as soon as he got out of that unbelieving town, where, there's, where some faith was, finally, he could start getting the job done again. And that's just how it keeps on going through the rest of this. And I think I'll just go ahead and end the message right there.